Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 4975 and today we are back in SnowRunner, continuing our SnowRunner Let's Play series. We're back in Lake Cov today for part two of our mini series. We're doing like a mini series inside our uh, main let's play here in Lake Cov. It's the brand new map that just got added to SnowRunner. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous episode that we did in Lake Cov, I definitely recommend you go and watch that before you watch today's video because this is obviously part two and that was part one. I will leave a link in the description to a SnowRunner playlist that I've made with all of the SnowRunner episodes that I've made so far, uh, as well as a couple of other trailers and bits and bobs. Uh, but today we are going to be continuing our SnowRunner Let's Play in Lake Cov. And uh, we're going to go and see if we can collect the radar trailer. Um, it's basically like a little mobile watchtower trailer thing. And um, it's really cool. It helps you discover the map. And I've actually uncloaked the location of it in the last episode. So we're going to see if we can go and get that thing today. And possibly go and explore some more of the map. But to do that, we need a brand new car, because the car that we used in the last episode, the Don 71, that was the most shit vehicle. Um, I ended up actually selling the vehicle because it was just that rubbish. And today I've got a brand new vehicle for you once again. I think this is the only scout that we've not checked out yet. And here it is. It's called the Yar 87. It's a little bit of an interesting truck. It's a 6x6. That's something to just note straight off the bat. Um, I don't know what this is based off in real life. I don't know if they actually made these in real life. Um, but it looks really cool. It has loads of awesome customization. And um, it can tow a trailer, which is going to be important for today's task. So let's just go ahead and jump into the customization. Um, I have gone in, as always, and unlocked all the most important parts of customization so we can fully pimp it out. Um, so we have got this upgraded engine here. This is the Azov AM. 4v160 engine and you can see that increases the power to weight massively it's now a minus which is uh, pretty good actually so we'll throw that in there the gearbox we're going to put in the snow runner gearbox we're in a snowy map so we need a snowy gearbox we can't actually lift the suspension which is kind of a shame i'm going to be honest um, but it does have massive tires and the ground clearance is considerably better than the Don so um, we shouldn't have too many issues with that the tires now as standard it gives us these nice mud tires here on road is poor but that doesn't matter the off-road and mud are both excellent and today I'm not going to go with the chain tires because the chain tires as you can see there the the mud um, the mud sort of value is only good and the thick snow that you go into is effectively mud it is thick snow but it is actually just mud and yeah they have excellent traction on ice but um, you're not really on the ice for that long and I just don't want to get stuck in the thick snow again so we're gonna leave the stock tires on there I think they look pretty cool although they actually look a bit more beastly I do like those a little bit more but that's five grand now we'll, we'll leave the stock ones on there they're pretty good uh, the winch we're gonna put the autonomous scout on this map is very punishing so um, I definitely recommend putting that winch on if you have the option to the frame add-ons we can put a roof rack on here which I'm gonna do because that gives us uh, 120 litres of fuel extra, 300 repair parts and 4 spare wheels. So I don't know where the other spare wheels are because there's only one wheel on the roof unless it puts them in the back somewhere but anyway um, we've got a bunch of spare wheels that's going to be useful in case we do have a little accident. The snorkel front facing yep we're going to throw that on there just in case we go through the ice which we did actually do in the APC last episode um, in miscellaneous and we can have the factory beacon but that does remove your roof rack you can have the double round beacons you can have the tri square beacons which is a little parking light on the front there those three in the middle 
Um, I think we might go for them, but let's have a look what else we can do. We've got Twin Horns, and we've got the Angled Sun Visor. The Sun Visor actually does look pretty cool on this, so I'm going to put that on. I'm going to put the Tri-Square Beacons on as well. On the rear bumper, there's sadly nothing you can change, so a little bit unfortunate, a bit of a missed opportunity, but anyway. Um, on the rooftop, you can have small parking lights, which are just actually hidden in there, so they're kind of pointless, um, there's not much point having them. You can have the spotlights, which are just those right there. Um, it actually has lights on as standard, so um, I guess you can put those on if you want, or you can have the roof fog lights, but the, um, the frame add-on that we have basically has those fog lights up there. So that is all hunky-dory. On the front bumper, there's a couple of different options. We've got the hinged front bumper. We've got the single bar. We've got the fog lighter, which doesn't actually have any lights on it, which is kind of weird. And we've got the stock, which does have those two little spotlights down there. Uh, I do quite like the single bar. That looks quite mean. It looks very off-roady. And this thing is quite bulbous, so it does kind of suit that. So I'm going to throw that on there. I don't think we can change the rims. No. And let's now have a look in the paint options. So you can have the stock uh, red and black. You can have dark blue and light blue. You can have green and white. You can have black and orange. Or you can have beige and red which kind of looks a little bit weird um it actually does remind me of like a search and rescue vehicle a little bit this one does as well um i quite like the green and white that actually does look quite cool uh so yeah i think we're gonna go for that today and there we go that is the thing fully customized we've done everything we need to do with the yar 87 it's an awesome looking vehicle it can tow a trailer which is going to be useful and hopefully it should be a lot better at off-roading so i just thought i'd show you basically the mission we're going to be undertaking today we are currently here at the garage there is a fuel station just across the road, which is all very nice. In the last episode, we went and explored these three watchtowers right here. Um, it did take us a long time. It took me about three hours, actually, uh, just to make that 30-minute video. Uh, but, you know, that's the life of a YouTuber. I'm not complaining. Um, but we did uncloak this area right here. It's kind of like a train station area. And you can see right here, it's just a tiny little dot on the map. I'll highlight it there for you. That is the little trailer that we're going to go and pick up today. Um, it's the mobile watchtower and we actually have to go and do a little mission. Basically, we have to go and collect it and bring it back to the garage and then we can use as much as we like. So that is the mission we're going to be undertaking today. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Okay, so here we are outside in the Yar 87 for the very first time. Um, I've planned out a little route that we're going to take. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. It's basically the same route that we took in the APC in the last episode. Um, so, the Yar 87. We do have complete diff locks in this thing, um, which is permanently turned on. And we also have all-wheel drive. Let me just go and turn that on. Uh, so basically, uh, we've got engageable all-wheel drive. We've got the mud tires on there, which should be very good off-road, I'm hoping. Um, we've got the roof rack on there, which has enough fuel to refuel us once. The standard fuel tank has 110 litres, which is actually quite big for a scout vehicle. Um, by the looks of it at the moment the fuel consumption is staying in single digits as well so if you can keep it in single digits then you know you've got a pretty good um well you've got a pretty economical car there um when it comes to fuel consumption anyway um so hopefully fuel running out shouldn't be an issue with this thing 
Um, hopefully we'll have enough to go there and back. Um, but yeah, it seems like a very good vehicle so far, and um, one of the other features that I didn't show off in the last episode is actually the beacons there, that you can see are turned on at the moment. We can actually now turn the beacons off, and I'm going to do that because I don't really like the beacons, honestly. And this is the turn off we want to take. Uh, we went actually down here in the APC and we're going to be going across the same patch of ice that we went through in the last episode and if you haven't seen that we did actually fall through the ice in the APC um, so I have a feeling we may fall through the ice again because this thing is uh, well it's quite heavy it's about the same size ish as the APC uh, it does have those like fatter tires which might let it float over the ice a bit more but I don't know honestly um, so I've just gone for low plus there um, it was struggling a little bit on this snow um, not too bad nothing crazy um, I mean obviously you can see it's still moving but uh, let's actually go and stick it back in automatic does it go any faster not really low plus is effectively automatic to be honest with you but uh, for the vehicles that it only allows you to um, put diff locks on when you're in low range it's quite useful because then you can basically put it in low range automatic uh, uh, sorry with diff lock in automatic it just gives you a little bit more um, a little bit more power because the low range gearbox is a little bit slow sometimes and then one of the tricks I like to use is actually if you stick it in low range and it starts spinning and then just bang it into automatic and sometimes that can actually just give you a little bit of power to pull you out of the well, situation that you're in basically right so ahead is the ice patch that we went through in the APC um, we have this nice little road just before we do get to it uh, but then when we get on the ice uh, we did go through it and I have to say I don't feel as confident that this thing would be able to pull me out like the APC is probably the best off-road scout in this game and that barely managed to pull itself out so I'm not gonna go balls to the wall crazy with this I'm just gonna take it slowly and if we start hearing cracking noises then I will slow down but we're just gonna take it slow I've tried to choose the nicest part possible oh that's going that's going I'm gonna boot it okay that that bit wasn't too bad when we went in the APC I thought oh we'll just be able to drive across there because that's where the road sort of connects across I was very very wrong uh, we did manage to get out of it but um, yeah if you're gonna cross this area go where I just went it's slightly nicer um, it did crack a little bit but if you boot it you should be okay but we're actually not that far away from the trailer now so providing I don't roll it on this quite rocky part here this doesn't look very nice and it's also covered in ice which is making it very slippery okay right um, I might just go for a winch on the front because I don't want to roll when we're this close I don't want to go up there because that's Anytime you get one side of the vehicle more raised than the other, especially when you've got a roof rack on, that does make it a little bit more tippy. So if you can keep it as level as possible, then you're less likely to tip over. That's also ice that we've just driven over, and I didn't even realise. So we've got to be more careful now. Um, here is actually the train station that we're uh, approaching. And the trailer, uh, for those of you who may have seen it before, um, where this trailer is located, it's in a really shit little 
nook really it's a bit in a bit of a difficult place to get out of you'll see what I mean in a second um, what happened there the fence just fell down on its own okay uh, so basically it's just behind that building there and now you can access it from this side uh, but if we go over here you'll see in a minute there's like some little ramps that you can drive over and it just makes it a little bit easier to get to we have to get it out of there that's the main issue so hmm I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna get so basically it's just over there if I yeah you can see it's just in there now it's in a little bit of a difficult location to get to because it's basically trapped in that little area and it doesn't look that bad on the map but you can see there's really no way in there um, right so I decided for the sake of making this video a little bit easier um, I went and got the crane truck and I thought we'll just lift it out of there I have seen people manage to get it out of there without any issues um, I kept getting stuck on one little bit and it was being a real pain in the ass and I probably could have got it out of there with some perseverance but I thought we'll just go and get the crane truck and lift it out of there because it's just a whole lot easier the Yar is a brilliant little truck um, but it sadly couldn't quite lift it out of there I got it stuck just there so I managed to get past the main part but what you can't see is there's some like railings there and um, it kept getting stuck on that little well on that train thing there so I thought we'll just go and get the uh, crane truck there and lift it out so let's activate the anchors and go into crane mode I've not really shown off the crane that much in this game um, it's really cool actually I do quite like it um, let's go ahead and just lift that thing up out of there and this is what the majority of people do on YouTube you'll see them uh, just lift it out of here just because it's a whole lot easier that thing is in a really shit place I honestly have no idea why they decided to put it in there uh, why they couldn't have just put it in well just well here is a nice place but why they couldn't have just put it like somewhere sensible like over near those sheds there uh, but sadly they decided not to um, but anyway we have now got it out of there let's go and lower it down and there we go we've now got it out of there and we can go ahead and restore the crane and now let's go and jump into the yard once again and um, oh, we have to turn the beacons off again there we go it's also starting to turn night time again I did show off the brand new lot northern lights in the last episode I'm not going to show them off in today's episode so if you want to see the northern lights I did show them off in the last episode um, they are really cool though it's a nice little addition to the game right so we've rescued the trailer now um, let me just show you on the map we basically have to just go back where we came uh, we have to take it to here which is basically just opposite the garage it's called the harbour village this is the garage right here it's just across the road so basically just going to retrace our steps and um, yeah I would like to show how this thing works though so let's go ahead and do that before we set off I'll show you how this thing works so basically you can see this map is still mainly blacked out um, but we have actually discovered all the watchtowers on this map uh, but basically you have to use this little thing uh, to go and discover the rest and the way it works basically you attach it to your vehicle it does use up fuel so it has 120 litres of fuel in it uh, so you do have to keep it topped up and basically you go down here to activate radar and I think it's all automatic you press triangle it unfolds the little thing there the little radar pops out it's really cool how it works and then it spins around a couple of times 
sorts it all out and then it packs itself away once again and then it should in a minute there we go it should now have um, uncloaked a bit more of the map which indeed it has so um, basically you drive in this black area and it will uncloak the bits of map for you uh, so it's that's why it's called a mobile watchtower you basically you have to complete this mission and then you can use it as much as you want so it's not really that difficult you basically drive to here and then take it back to the garage so that's how it works let's go ahead and take it back to the garage now so I'm just gonna go back the same way that we came because I know that's not too bad um, this trailer for some reason though it does feel really really heavy when you're towing it um, I don't know if it was just because it was stuck on something earlier um, it doesn't feel too bad now um, oh yeah this is where we have to be careful as well because there was some ice and we have actually gone through the ice a little bit okay yeah let's not do that um, if we skirt around this side that doesn't look like ice maybe we'll be okay yeah that's not ice there um, I don't know I don't, that's the hard thing about this map uh, it's really cool that you can go through the ice I mean it's not fun when you do go through it um, but I like the realism part of it however um, it's really difficult to know whether you're actually going to go through it or not and it's sometimes really difficult like there to actually know it, that there's ice underneath it like on the way here I didn't even know there was ice there um, it was only on the way back that we sort of realized um, but as I always do um, a little review of the vehicle um, the Yar I have to say I'm impressed with this thing um, compared to the Don that we drove in the last episode that was absolutely crap at exploring this map um, maybe with Michigan that thing would have been a bit better uh, but this map is very punishing so whatever vehicle you decide to go exploring in you need to make sure that it is capable because um, it's a very hard harsh map and uh, the Yar, I have to say, six wheel drive, um, it's got diff locks, obviously we've got the roof on there and everything, it's coped very very well and the main thing about this vehicle is the fact that it can actually tow a trailer because that is important um, with this map, there is quite a few trailers that you have to go and tow. We now have to cross this ice again so let's go steady. I don't know if this thing's going to add any more weight to us. We did start going there. I flinched then. We did start going through. Luckily, it's not too bad, that part. Um, there is actually a massive ice lake on this map as well that you can go and drive along, but you've got to be careful that you don't fall through it. Uh, but yeah, the Yar, I can definitely recommend this vehicle for you um, for whatever map you're driving on. If it can survive lake coved then you're gonna be okay in any map um, it's coping fairly well with the snow uh, it does get stuck now and then like it is now it slows down a little bit but honestly if you keep moving that's all that's important this game is not about speed and how fast you can complete certain things um, it's all about can you actually make it and this thing will make it I, I have complete trust in this thing that it will make it um, it's pretty similar to the APC to be honest it's not quite as good at like thick snow and uh, like boggy stuff because the APC doesn't even slow down for that this thing does but it will still pull you through it and um, I mean in this episode so far I've only had to use the winch once uh, so if you have a vehicle that can make it somewhere without using the winch then you know you've got a good vehicle so yeah, uh, the Yar definitely can recommend this thing to you. Uh, we are almost now back at the village. Let me just see where we need to turn off. We do need to just turn off here and deliver it to there. And then I believe we can keep the thing. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure you would be able to keep the thing because we've not even explored 
half of the map yet and I think this is the only one that you can um, explore with in the in the game I don't know whether there's a trailer store anywhere in this game or in this map sorry um, but yeah let's see what happens when we do deliver it there so the forgotten prototype I should have mentioned that earlier you do have to complete this mission before you basically get it but you can see there we do get the prototype exploration unit as a reward um, and it says an interesting device we have some plans about it but while we're here you may want to try it out as well which is absolutely what we're going to be doing in the next episode uh, but that is going to do it for today's episode guys thank you all so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed in the next episode we're going to be taking the exploration unit here and see if we can go and discover one of the brand new trucks in this map uh, but that is going to do it for today i hope you have all enjoyed if you have then don't forget to like the video and subscribe and uh, leave a comment as well but thank you very much and i'll have a and i'll see you all in the next video